Daryl came in today to ride with Dan in a C1 Corvette, and I'm sure glad he had his seatbelt on. I, I survived! <laughs> Daryl's coming over to get an explanation on, on different kinds of tires. Okay, so obviously, this has got to be the radio, right? That's the radio. And that's the bias plate? that's the bias plate. I do know a little bit about radial tires because that's really all I've had in growing up was just with radial tires. But I, I do like learning stuff. Well, uh, this is the early, the early design of tires and this is modern, okay? Basically, they make tires, when they make any tire, they take something, whether it's string or wire rope, and they wrap it around a mold a bunch of times. Okay. And then they pour rubber around it. Okay, and this is, this is what holds your, your tire shape and poured rubber around it. looks like it. a shoestring on a, on a boot. Basically, that's what it is. Poly, it says right here, polyester cord. So, you know, I mean, we know from the 60s, polyester was a thing. Oh yeah. You know, you everybody had- a pair of pants that was polyester. Right, everybody had polyester in the 60s. But that's really where, 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 bias, where tire started is in, in the bias ply category. But because bias ply tires, when you add or subtract weight, the, 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 the contact patch, which is the spot on the ground that the tire touches. Right. Everybody's seen the tire and it looks a little flat on the bottom. That's the contact patch. Now, as you load and unload a bias ply tire, that contact patch will change size because these tires are super flexible because all they have is string. Right. So the engineers wanted to stop that from happening because when, when you have a different size contact patch, then you have different traction characteristics of the tire. Oh, that's why we spun out so much when I was... Exactly, <laughs> that's why, because that's when you when unload... You, really you take your life into your hands. That's right, when you unload the car, you know what I mean, yeah. and the weight travels to the right side of the car, those, those tires get fat, the contact patches get fat, and the, the ones on the, on the opposing side get skinny. So it's real uneven. Right. And that's okay. what makes it spin out because all of a sudden you've got all your weight on two tires and nothing on the other two. Yeah. And, and, and there's not an even not, not enough contact patch to hold the, the vehicle stable. All right. So engineers needed to change that. They wanted it, the, the contact patch to stay more uniform. Okay. And that's where the wire rope came from because wire rope, let's face it, wire rope is way stronger than string any day or wreckers right. would have rope cables. Right. You know right. what I mean? They would yeah. use, you know, winches would have ropes instead of cables. Um, for the most part, wire rope is much stronger. The downside to wire rope is, is that like any other wire product, once you kink it, it's no matter how point. hard you pull on that, you can never, ever, ever unkink it. Right. It will always stick kinked. And anybody that's had a wavy tire, that's exactly what that is. The wire rope inside the tire is kinked. So when you hit a curb or you hit something really difficult. That's right. You know, right like, a par like one of those parking things in front of a supermarket and those little yeah. stupid things. And then the tire goes out around. Right. Well, ah, got well it. a lot okay. of times it starts with a kink in the cable and then after enough flexing it breaks. All right. That's where out around comes from because then the wire rope is no longer attached and it uncoils and you get that big giant bubble in your tire. You're riding along and the wheel's shaking because you, you got a giant bubble in it. Uh -huh. That's because the wire rope is broken. Or, okay. or the, the string in bias ply mm -hmm. tires, because you can break the string and the same thing happens. They go out around. That's why you can't ever really trust a bias ply tire. They say bias ply tires last longer. The rubber might, but the string never does. So if you've got old bias ply tires, don't trust them. If you've got old tires, don't trust them. All modern tires by the government are, have a, a, a date on them. And anything after 10 years old, even if it's been sitting on a shelf for 10 years, the tire is no longer warrantable because they don't know what kind of moisture condition because the tire is only re moisture resistant on the outside. Can you get condensation inside a tire? Oh, heck yeah. Oh. Anytime you compress air, it drops the water out of it. That's why. So that's I, how sometimes when you pull the, the plug out of the tire, you're actually getting an actual spray of mist. That's right. Oh, okay. We have a super duper expensive compressor here to make sure that we don't have any water in our air. Now more expensive and less expensive radials, 
They both have wire rope, but in the more expensive, they have stainless steel wire rope. Okay. That's how they can give you that 80,000 mile treadmill. You know, our tires will last 80,000 miles because we know the wire rope will last 80,000 miles. Okay. So if you use steel wire rope and they sit on the shelf for a long time or you get moisture in the wheel, then the, the wire rope can become compromised. Therefore, the tire is compromised. Got it. Well, ba ba basically, when you have, when it's loading and unloading the car, when you're going around a corner, centrifugal force puts more weight on one on side. side or the other, right? Now, the, the, the contact patch on this one, say, when you're riding down the road, is this big, okay, normally. But when you put it into a corner, it gets wider, larger, because you're, there's the, the sidewall squishes and it makes that contact patch wider. But it, on the opposing side, it makes the contact patch smaller. So it was like here, and then you start going on a corner, it's like here. So you have zero traction on those low weight tires. Although you never take all the weight off of a four wheel vehicle. And there's people that'll say, yeah, that's not true. But on passenger cars on the highway, you almost never take all four wheels off one wheel off the pavement, no matter what you're doing, because by the time you get that one wheel almost off, you're about to crash. Because when the contact patch on any tire gets really small, you lose, you lose uh, adhesion to the ground. And that means you're spinning or sliding or something along those lines. None of which almost ever ends up in, in, a, in a good thing. <laughs> it's almost mm -hmm. always bad. But bias ply tires have a tendency to be real flexible rubber number one because they only have string in them so they're way more flexible radial tires don't and they hold their shape under extreme conditions so when you see like tractor trailers going up and down the road you know those tires there's a lot of technology in those tires there's a lot of rubber a lot of wire rope and a lot of air pressure and um the bigger the tire, the more stored energy, the more dangerous it can be. So the, 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 the more predictable you can make it, the safer it becomes. So right. part of tire safety is making it more predictable in the way it sits and the way it handles and the way it drives and the way it's stored on the shelf. All those things, you want predictability. So I, I do have a question just like on this tire. I see this a lot. But see how the, the see the see the ball spot right. there. You know why here? that is? No, that's why I'm asking you. Why is that? The, the, the manufacturer that is the manufacturer's um, discard point. When that that's what we call a wear bar. And when that wear bar touches the ground, this tire is to be thrown away. Period. And we measure that for inspection. And there's actually some tread left on this tire. We'll go in there, measure in between the treads, and measure that wear bar. Once it gets to a certain point or that, or for Virginia state inspection, as soon as that wear bar touches the street, that tire fails inspection, period. But, but how, how does it happen here and here? Is that because designed it, that way? It's made into the mold. Basically, this is a ski at this point. It's not even a tire anymore. It's just sliding along because there's no way to dissipate the water. That's what these grooves in this tire are for. So when you splash through the puddle, okay, all these grooves, give the water someplace to go. Right. And that's why your tires all splash out. When you go through something, they shoot water out of the sides, right? Well, they're actually shooting water in a 360 degree circle away from the contact patch because they want the water away and the rubber on the street. But see, like this one here, this one here has grooves that come off of the, the center lines to the outside edge, that's but right. this one does not. Some of it's gone now. Now a big side of the, the, a big edge of this is gone. And there probably was a wavy line that went all the way around it. But they believed they didn't want to throw the, the water to the side. They threw it front and back. So when you're going down the road and it's displacing water, it's throwing the water forward of the tire and rearward of the tire. So that's why we had so much hydroplaning when we were younger. Right, because the front tires are doing what? They're throwing They're water throwing right in front of the back tires. That's, yeah. that's right. So that's why we don't use them. And we used to love to do that as a kid. That's right. <laughs> there's, there's, there's sort of unilateral lines. We, you don't almost never see that unless it's a commercial tire yeah. that's made for super high miles. You know, but pretty much all of them, because they have open and closed shoulder. And this, would be con this, this one would have been a closed shoulder. There's no grooves in it to let water out. 
and then there's open shoulder. Okay, this section right here. See how it's got grooves in it? Right. That's to let the water out. So you always want, anytime you have a traction, like you look at any of your four by four tires that are for mud and snow and all that stuff, they all have big grooves on the side to throw as much stuff out from underneath the tire as they can. Yeah, the other thing when I was a kid, we used to love to do donuts in the parking lot up in Michigan. Mm -hmm. It was really easy on these, but when they came out with the radials, it was a lot harder. Now I understand why. Yeah, yeah. So a radial tire keeps its radius. A bias ply doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest difference in the handling category. The biggest difference in, in the tire itself is the longevity and the predictability of it versus of radial versus bias ply. Is that why some radial tires can actually be like what we used to have as snow tires? That's right. Because of the way that it's made. That's you right. You don't have to change them out to put snow tires on. Well, what happens is, is that they design a self-cleaning tread. And that's where, instead of the treads, the, dist the, the distance between the treads, instead of them being straight, they're angled. So centrifugal force pulls it away. So the faster the tire, you know, right. spins, the more centrifugal force pulls the, the mud or snow or whatever away from the tire. So when you get a snow tire, they're always gonna be a self-cleaning tread, just like a mud tire right. is always a self-cleaning tread. But they have a crossover tire, which does street and, you know, what they call an all season, right. all season tire. And, if, and, and really all an all season tire is, is a smaller tread design, still incorporating the self-cleaning feature. Okay. So why do you have a sawzall here? Um, it's easier to cut a tire with a, saw, it. with a sawzall than it is a, a pocket so, knife. So you're gonna be a cut up? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna chop some tires. I'm just gonna try to cut a patch out of each one and then we'll, we'll discuss the patches. the sidewall there's a little bit of cord in it like a bias ply but there's no metal in that sidewall this part right here that's the most dangerous part of the tire all right rubber versus sawzall rubber's up now you can see inside there, you can see the metal, okay? And that yeah. metal is cast inside that tire. See, this, that, that's the tread, that's the thick part. <clears throat> and this is the inside layer. If you can see how thin that rubber is on the inside versus the steel cord, versus the steel right. cord, cord in the outside. See how much thicker it is? Right. That's what makes the outside of the rubber watertight. But that's why when you get moisture on the inside, there's little pores inside here and that moisture will get into that wire rope and rust it. And rust it right and out. And rust it. And when it starts <clears throat> yeah. to rust, we all know rust is bad. Yeah. Rust is really bad. Now, expensive tires have stainless steel. They are less inclined to do this. They're, 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 they're less prone to water damage. Um, that's why they always say buy the best tires you can afford to buy. Hmm. Now that's a radial. So a bias ply, we're gonna cut it right here. It was even softer trying to get it apart. Yeah, yeah, you see where the saw went through it a lot easier. Now you can see that yeah. it's just cotton or polyester cord and there's very little of it on the inside. It's all on the outside. Now that's the corner, that's the edge of the tire. Right, that's this part right up here. That's right, that's the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the reason they put that shoulder there is because these tires are so bad about sort of balling up when you go around right. a corner, it gives it something to ride on because they, they don't hold their shape. Mm -hmm. Well, even as you were cutting it, you could see that it was squishing together. 
Yeah, that's right. You could see the way it was balling right. up as I was yeah. just trying to manhandle it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you saw the video with uh, me and Dan. I've been in that seat You've been on in that several seat? occasions. Yeah. Well, you definitely have to hold on for dear life, especially when he's going around the corner, yeah. because the whole back end just kind of Yeah, went that's out. right. That's right. And it, it, it's unpredictable. When he decided to let go, it let go, and there was nothing Dan could do about it. Predictability. Bias ply tires have no predictability. They just sort of do what the hell they want to do. They're sort of like a horse, got a mind of their own. So have you ever been on a test drive with Dan? I have been on multiple de test drives with Dan. I've been on some death rides with Dan. Well, I wasn't sure if I was coming back alive. So, I, you know. I know your feeling. <laughs> yeah, and the bad part about a Corvette, some of them, the seat belts are just too small for me. <laughs> I just barely got into you, it. You barely got it clicked. That's a scary thing, Dan and no seatbelt. Okay, the older cars that are made for these bias ply tires, how do people actually switch over to something that's more stable? Uh, you can switch to radial tires, um, but it is a good idea to have a good tire shop reset the tire specs because radial specs and, and bias ply specs are different. But you have to have somebody who knows what you they're looking Somebody that knows what's going on with old cars. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's not inside their design specs. Yeah, yeah. If you look at a, a 64 GTO or a 67 GTO, the only difference in those two suspension systems is one had bias and one had radial. So are bias ply tires totally gone? No. No, bias ply tires still have their, you know, some people still run them and some people still use them, but they don't drive their cars fast or they don't use their cars in a performance manner so, so they're, they're good for stock cruising around you know what i mean and especially if they're if they're not real old you know because you can't really trust them when they get old but so you can go to a tire company and buy a bias ply tire? every trailer tire out there is a bias because they don't want to spend the extra money on a radial tire when there's no performance involved well thank you so much i appreciate all the, sure. the information sure no problem i hope it gets you to pick a good set of tires Thank you. Sure, come on, I'll walk you out.